Then he mentions <coughs> the second matter to which Shaykh Fawzan gives a title Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yarda an yushraka ma'ahu fi ibadatihi ahad That Allah, the perfect and most high, is not pleased that anyone else should be associated in worship with him. Then comes the actual text of the author, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah. Al-Mas'ala al-Thaniya, anna Allah la yarda an yushraka ma'ahu ahadun. Al-Mas'ala al-Thaniya, anna Allah la yarda an yushraka ma'ahu ahadun ghayruhu fi ibadatihi. The second matter, and the second of these three matters, which is obligatory upon us to learn, is that Allah is not pleased that anyone else should be associated with him in worship of him. Shaykh Fawzan said in explanation, this matter is connected to the first matter. Because the first one was an explanation of the obligation of worshipping Allah and of following the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is the meaning of the two shahadas as shahadatain the obligation of worshipping Allah and of following the Messenger which proceeded in the first matter of these three and that is the meaning of the two testifications the meaning of the testification, the shahada, that none has a right to worship except Allah, la ilaha illallah. And the testification, and the Muhammadan Rasulullah, and the testification that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. In the first, mes- the first matter was an explanation of that. And the second matter, what occurs here, he said that the second matter is that worship if it has shirk mixed with it, then it will not be accepted. If ibadah, worship, has shirk mixed with it, it will not be accepted. Because, is it, <coughs> because it is essential that ibadah, that worship, is khalisa li wajhillahi azza wa jal. It is essential that worship is purely is done purely for the face of Allah, the mighty and majestic. So therefore, whoever worships Allah and worships something else along with him, then the worship of him is futile, batila, futile or null and void. That worship of Allah is null and void if a person worships something else along with him. Its presence is just the same as its absence. In that worship of a person, he worships Allah, and yet he worships something else besides Allah. Then his worship of Allah, as the Shaykh said, first it is batil, it's false and futile, baseless, null and void. Its presence is just the same as its absence. There's no reality, no reality to it. Because worship, ibadah, will not benefit except with ikhlas and tawheed except that it is done purely for Allah and the person is upon tawheed so if if it, if the worship is mixed with shirk then it is corrupted just as he the most high said and then Shaykh Bawzan quotes an evidence for that <coughs> وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ أَمَلُكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Surah Az-Zumar, 39th Surah, Ayah 65 With the explanation, And it was revealed to you, O Muhammad, addressed to the Prophet wasallam, And it was addressed to you, And it was uh, revealed to you, and to those messengers who came before you that if you associate anything with Allah then all your deeds 
will be rendered null and void. And then you would certainly, certainly be from the losers. And then you would certainly be from the losers. And Shaykh Al-Azam quotes a second evidence. He said, and he, the Perfect, said, وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Surah Al-An'am, the sixth surah, ayah 88. With the explanation, and if they committed shirk, and if they, meaning, and if they associated anything along with Allah, then whatever deeds they had done would be rendered null and void. Shaykh Fawzan said, so ibadah, worship, is not called ibadah, except along with tawheed. It's not called worship, it's not called ibadah, worship, unless that person who does it is upon tawheed, upon the worship of Allah alone. Just as the salah, just as the prayer, is not called salah, it's not called prayer, except along with purification, tahara. A you know, person who's doing an action, he doesn't bother to make wudu, he needs to make wudu, he doesn't make wudu. He just does what the actions of the prayer. Then what he does, it will not be called prayer. Unless someone says, is he doing the prayer? And it's known that he's not upon wudu, he knows he's not upon wudu. The action that he's doing, the movements he's making, it will not count as being prayer. Salah. So the chef said, this is the exact same with regard to tawheed. With regard to ibadah. <coughs> the person is not upon tawheed, he's upon shirk. His ibadah will not be called ibadah. Just as the prayer will not be called prayer, except with tahara, with purification. So if shirk is mixed with ibadah, so if shirk is mixed with worship, afsadaha, it corrupts it and nullifies it. Just as is the case with purification. If it is mixed, I mean a person is upon purification, if it is mixed with one of those things which break the wudu, then that corrupts it and nullifies it. And therefore, Allah, in many of the ayahs of the Qur'an, joins the command to worship Him and the prohibition of shirk. And for this reason, in many of the, those ayahs where, there's, where Allah the Most High commands that He be worshipped, He mentions along with it a prohibition of the shirk, for this reason. And then Shaykh al-Fawzan quotes a number of evidences for that. He said, He the Most High said, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Surah Al-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah 36, with the explanation. And worship Allah and do not associate anything along with Him. And he said, and he quotes a second evidence, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ Surah Al-Bayyina, the 98th Surah, Ayah 5, with the explanation, and they were not commanded, except that they should worship Allah, making the religion purely and sincerely for Him. Hunafa upon the true religion, upon the true religion of Tawheed, turning away from shirk. And he quotes a third evidence, he said, and he, the mighty and majestic, said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِيَ إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ Surah Al-Anbiya, 21st Surah, Ayah 25. With the explanation, and we did not send before you a messenger, except that we revealed to him that none has the right to be worshipped except me, so therefore worship me alone. Then Shaykh Fawzan comments and says, after quoting these three evidences, he says, So he's saying, He the Most High, La ilaha illa ana. With the explanation, none has the right to be worshipped except me. Shaykh Fawzan makes a point here, which is the same point with regard to the first shahada, La ilaha illallah. The Shaykh said the ayah, or the part of the ayah, La ilaha illa ana. None has the right to be worshipped except me. This contains two matters. Fihi nafyu shirk 
وفيه إثبات العبادة لله تعالى السين لا إله إلا أنا من has the right to worship إلا أنا except me this contains two matters it contains a denial or it contains a negation of shirk and it contains affirmation of worship for Allah the Most High obviously the first part la ilaha is the denial of the negation of shirk and the second part illa ana then Allah the Most High affirms in that part worship for himself then Shaykh al-Fawzan hafizahullah he quotes a further evidence he said and he the Most High said وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَنْ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهِ Surah Al-Isra, the 17th Surah, Ayah 23. With explanation, And your Lord commanded that you should not worship except Him. And your Lord commanded that you should not worship except Him. And then Shaykh Fawzan quotes the fifth evidence. He said, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ Surah Al-Nahl, the 16th Surah, Ayah 36. With the explanation, And we sent a messenger to every nation, commanding, Worship Allah and avoid الطاغوت, Avoid all false objects of worship. Shaykh Fawzan said So he joined between the worship of Allah and avoiding the Taghut He joined between the worship of Allah and avoiding all the false objects of worship Because the worship of Allah will not be ibadah The worship of Allah will not be worship except with avoiding the Taghut Avoiding the worship of all the false objects of worship. And that is shirk. Shall I say it? Except we're avoiding ta'ud, and that is shirk. Ta'ud here it means shirk. And he gives evidence for this point. He said, He, he the Most High said, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالْتَاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى لَنْ فِصَامَ لَهَا Surah Al-Baqarah the second surah, Ayah 256. The high which comes straight after, Ayat al Kursi. Ayah 256, with the explanation. So whoever rejects the Tahut, whoever rejects the false objects of worship, and truly believes in Allah, and that Allah alone has the right to be worshipped, then he has clung on to the firmest handhold which will never break Shaykh al said so al-iman billah having iman in Allah truly believing in Allah is not sufficient except with rejection of at-taghut rejection of the false subjects of worship it's not sufficient that a person comes along and says I'm a believer in Allah I worship Allah and yet, he worships other things besides Allah as well. The Shaykh said, explaining the re- uh, uh, some reasoning behind this, he said, Otherwise, in fact, it's not, it's not sufficient just the person says, I believe in Allah. And he does not reject the false subjects of worship. The Shaykh said, Otherwise, the mushrikun, the people of shirk, they had iman in Allah, they believed in Allah. Well, they believed in Allah. However, they associated others in worship with him. And the Shaykh mentions the evidence for that. But this is to correct a misunderstanding of many people. They think that the people, the people before Islam, the people of shirk, their problem was they didn't believe in Allah. They, didn't, they did not believe in Allah, so therefore they were kafirs. The Shaykh makes the point, the people of shirk, they, had, they did believe in Allah. However, they associated others in worship with him. They did shirk with him. And the Shaykh the evidence for that. He said, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ Surah Yusuf, the 12th Surah, Ayah 106. With the explanation, And most of them do not believe 
except that they associate others in their worship of Allah. And most of them do not believe except that they associate others in their worship of Allah. Shaykh of Arzan said, so he, the perfect, makes it clear that they had belief in Allah. However, they corrupted it with shirk. They corrupted it with associate, association of others in worship with Allah. And Allah's refuge is sought. Amen. This is the meaning of the saying of the Shaykh, the, the author, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah. This is the meaning of the saying of the Shaykh, that whoever worshipped Allah and obeyed the Messenger, then he may not associate anything in worship along with Allah. Because Allah is not pleased that anything be associated with him in his worship. Anything. Then Shaykh Farzan quotes an evidence from the hadith for the hadith Qudsi. He said, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in that which he reported from his Lord, the mighty and majestic, he said, Allah the Most High said, أنا أغنى الشركاء عن الشرك من عمل عملا أشرك فيه معي غيري تركته وشركه The proof for this is the hadith Qudsi that the Prophet وسلم, said Allah the Most High said I am the one having no need of any association of worship whoever does an action in which he associates anyone else along with me then I will abandon him and his shirk. I will abandon him and his association, his shirk. In a footnote, they mention this hadith is reported by Muslim, and it's a hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. Shaykh al Razan said, So there are people who pray the salah, and they bear witness that none has a right to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And they do that plentifully. And they fast. And they perform the Hajj. However, they make supplication to tombs. And they perform worship of Al Hassan and Al Hussein and Al Badawi and so and so and so and so. And they call for relief from the dead. Those people, their ibadah, their worship is batila. False and futile. So, Shaykh, that's a very important point there. It's not said about them that the, the part of worship that they, of Allah that they do, that's accepted. And the worship of others, that's not accepted. That is not the case. That, that is not the case. Shaykh makes it clear that they worship. These are people who worship Allah, say the Shahada, perform Hajj, fast, and so on. And yet, they call upon others. They do shirk. They call upon the tombs. As he said, they perform acts of worship towards Al Hassan and Al Hussein and Al Badawi and so and so and so and so and seek relief from the dead. Those people, their ibadah, their worship is false and futile, null and void, batila, because they have associated others with Allah, the mighty and majestic. They have mixed worship, ibadah, with shirk. So their deeds are futile and nullified until until they single out Allah the mighty and majestic with worship and they make worship purely for him and they abandon the worship of everything else besides him until that happens their, their actions will be null and void all their actions all of them until they do that they single out Allah and make their worship purely and sincerely for him <coughs> the Shaykh said otherwise they will be upon nothing so it is obligatory to draw attention to this and no, doubt, no, no doubt this is something that is so important that it needs drawing attention to in this Ummah because there are how many people like this are like this that the Shaykh has mentioned that they are upon worship of Allah and yet they perform some, whether, whether a small amount or a great amount, of ibadah towards others than Allah. Which means that all their deeds 
They may have a mountain of good deeds, a mountain of worship of Allah, prayer and fasting, and so on. Yet it will be rendered null and void by the fact they have worshipped something besides Allah. And how few are the people who point this out, so the Sheikh of Awzan and the author Sheikh al-Islam here. How few are the, people, the true scholars who point this out. And how, how much in need is the Ummah of, of this pointing out. So the Sheikh said, just repeat what the Sheikh said, he said, Otherwise, they will be upon nothing. So it is obligatory to draw attention to this. Because Allah is not pleased that anything should be associated with him in his worship. Anyone. No matter who it is. It's not pleased that anyone, no matter who that, per- that, who that one is, should be associated with him in worship. He, the perfect, is not pleased that anyone should be associated with him, no matter who it may be. So that no one should say, I take the awliya, I take the beloved servants of Allah, as salihin, the righteous people, and the good people, I take them as intercessors, shufa'a. I do not worship the idols and images as they used to do in the times of ignorance. I only take these ones as intercessors. I do not worship them. So Sheikh al Fawzan quotes here the argument of those people who fall into shirk. This is what they say. They won't admit that they're committing shirk or they have evil evil doers who def- try and defend them. That this is what they say. Those who don't direct worship to other than Allah, they say, as the Sheikh quoted about them, I take from the awliya, from the beloved servants of Allah, who are righteous and good people, I take them as intercessors. I don't worship the idols and the images, as they used to do in the times of ignorance. I take these ones, mean these righteous ones, I take them only as intercessors. I do not worship them. This is what they claim. This is what they say to defend themselves. So Sheikh of Arzan said. So we say to him, the person who says this, we say to him, <laughs> This was the saying of the people in the times of Jahiliyyah, in the times of ignorance. What you've just said there, the argument you've just made, it was the same thing that they used to say. This was the saying of the times of people of the times of ignorance. They took them as intercessors with Allah because they were righteous people and beloved servants from the beloved servants of Allah in those things that they used to worship from the prophets and from the righteous people whose graves who died and then they worshipped their graves the people of shirk, the people in the times of Jahiliyyah that's what they used to say we, we, are, we take them as intercessors with Allah to draw us closer to Allah exactly the same statement, exactly the same excuse Sheikh Fawzan said, but Allah is not pleased with this. Allah is not pleased with this.